Dhan Foundation welcomes you all for this lecture series on world heritage and culture lecture number 101 with the topic sacred hills of madurai district which is going to be delivered by professor dr g sedraman sir of madurai kamarajar university thank you Uh, it does not appear because there is another uh, 
a special function for him. That is why I think he is not uh, included um, in this or why. So, uh, we always, whenever we go to Kentejwa or whenever we go to some other places, we always talk about him uh, because it is um, unavoidable. So, uh, it is not an ordinary relationship, some somewhat blood relationship. So, um, on a very happy Place of our lecture is on sacred hills of Madurai district. We have, and I was a student of Dr. Vijay Raman, he took us to all these uh, hills. And uh, when we began telling also, he used to uh, take us to uh, almost all uh, Jain hills in and around Madurai and other uh, regions. And myself and them, uh, Dr. Vijay have also. Very nice we visited these places and our brothers have written a very good, uh, I think it was released uh, last year, a very good, uh, very good book on uh, Emperor Kundra, eight uh, uh, grand Jain um, hills. I think they are all in and around the world. and I think the English version of that book is also, this is the book and the English version of this also, uh, I think it will be published uh, in, a, in a month or two. And uh, so, uh, I think most of most of you know about uh, some of the uh, sacred hills. Why we call these uh, hills as sacred? Because normally, considering hills or mountains as sacred spots is not. An Indian phenomena, it is an universal phenomenon. If you read phrases, Golden Dog, this whole volume is book, <coughs> a condensed form of this whole volume is one single volume, has also been published. If you go through that book, it has written many things about the mountains, the rivers, the seas, how they are all um, considered as sacred. Because they is the sacred hills, they have some sort of some piece of cultural identity. Say about Greek. In Greek also, uh, they have uh, they are consider, considering hills as the uh, sacred cross. Olympus, Olympus hill is considered as the sacred spot. Here also in India. We are considering the hills as sacred spots because there are many religious reasons, but what we feel is that the hills or the mountains are the motionless, they are um, motionless and they are motionless. And uh, they, are, they also provide a set of consciousness. They provide a state of consciousness. But in India, most of the hills, the sacred spots, are surrounded by mythological stories. Take, for example, Kailas, Mount Kailas. Mount Kailas is considered as the abode of Shiva and Pala. Where it locates? Is there any possibility to locate? This is Mount Kailas. And we come across many WhatsApp uh, photographs telling that this is Kailas. It is very difficult to reach because it's full of um, ice. So, but historically, no one can identify that. This is, it is beyond Himalayas. That is it. We do not know. It's a mythological, it's a mythical mount. We believe that Shiva and Parvati, they are uh, staying there. And in the evening, Shiva used to dance before 
Harvard and other classic classes. So these are all stories, but still, Himalayas are considered not only as the abodes of Modus one already, they are also considered as sacred spots for the Hindus, Buddhists, and the Jains. Most all these three religious people is selected hills or mountains as their um, sacred spots or the dwelling places of their gods and goddesses. And even some of the monks or the seers, the Hindu religious seers, they also selected these hills or mountains as their dwelling places because they wanted to live they come in a calm atmosphere without any disturbance from the householders. That is why they made these uh, hills and mountains as their own sacred spots. So, in that case, we all know that there are six abodes of Buddha. Of the six abodes, four are on the hills, two are on the hills. Thanks. So, there are, even for uh, Vishnu, there are uh, mountain uh, temples, uh, very famous mountain temples. There are many mythological stories why Vishnu selected that particular spot for um, this particular aspect of uh, uh, his uh, activities, that is, Gineshwara. There are many. Um, Mythological stories on the creation of the temple of the village of the city. Or there are differences of opinion about the uh, temple. Some people say that um, it was originally a spot temple. Some people say that it was originally a Buddha temple. And some people say that it was originally a Buddhist. Uh, the image itself was that of Alavadiswara. But no more, Alavadiswara. But still, what we feel is whether they are true or not, historically speaking, this Vikadeshwara temple it came into vogue even before the 5th century CE. Because in the 5th century CE, literally, Tamil literally epic Sarvariyara, there is a reference to this thing, the Vengara. So, almost all. Hindu gods, gods and goddesses were provided the hills as their dwelling places. Madurai district, one of the cultural centers of the Indian subcontinent, is not an exception. It also has a number of, say, about 13 sacred hills. Originally, Occupied by the Jains and later on the Pranical or the Vedic religious people of the Hindus also uh, occupied some of the areas of these trees. The Hindus constructed or excavated their own temples and constructed their own sexual temples by the side of the Jain or Buddhist monuments. Because all the three religions, they were trying to uh, promote their own religious ideas. So, they wanted to draw the people to their own faith from other faiths. That was the reason why they started excavating their temples and constructing structural temples by the side of the Jain and the uh, Buddhist uh, monuments. They are about I told that there are about 13 um, uh, hills in uh, the central hills in Malari district. The one which is famous is the elephant cave. It is Malari. It is located some 8 kilometers away from uh, Malari. And uh, the very, you can see this, it looks like can you see the screen, sir? We are not able to see the screen. Are you able to see? No, 
No, it is not being shared.
Carlos Pati, seven eight six six. One of the famous Alva uh, Nayama, Trinidad Samantha, in his Deva Times, he speaks about this animal. He says that animal is one of the great Jain center in those days. So during the Bhakti movement, there was a setback to the Jains. However, they regained their lost glory around 8 or 9 centuries. They even, they changed their attitude. They even accepted the idol worship, which was practiced, practiced by the Brahminical people or the Hindus, but not the Hindus. So these sculptures are located in the middle rock of Tarnarayana. There are about nine images of the uh, Tirthagras, Jain uh, Tirthagras, Mahavira, Vasudhanada, uh, and others uh, Tirthagras are carved So the donors, names of the donors are also engraved. <coughs> See, these are the names of the donors of these sculptures. These are in Vattalithu street, Tamil Vattalithu it is the next stage. It is the next stage of the development of Tamil script. So, from the study of these sacred hills, we are able to understand many historical facts. We are, we are able to understand the development of the script. We are able to understand the ancient names of the, some of the um, places. Say, for example, uh, Nagamalai. Nagamalai was called as Nagapedu. Even during the first century BCE, Nagamalai was called as Nagapedu. One day you, Tidian. Tidian is also as a reference in, in these sculptures. And there are so many um, uh, references, the historical references to this. And there was one um, monk by name Achanandi. Achanandi. Who was responsible for the carving of many Jain images in this sense? He traveled almost all areas in the Tamil country. And he was also mainly responsible for carving the sculptures of Tirthagaras, Exas, and Exis. So these are the names of Kalavari Nath, Yenadi Nath. Venkurai Sadan Arayan, Kolak of Marlak Nirat Kari Nadu, Seriya Pandey of Virabhapatru, Pudhubayaliya Pudhi of Virabhapni and Achanandi. I told that Achanandi was greatly responsible. In almost all these fields, this instance is not there. So, and there are also, um, the, I told you that the Hindus also excavated the same hill, on the western side of the hill, two important caves. One was dedicated to Vishnu in the form of Yogadarsimha, and another was dedicated to Subramanya. Both these caves were excavated in the 8th century CD. This is the um, Narsimha cave and uh, there are the inscriptions in Granta as well as in uh, Tamil Atalapu script. Uh, it was estimated in the year 770 CE by one uh, modern Maran Yeinan and there is a, a brother Maran Yeinan and his brother Maran Khan. When Maran Yeinan, they are one of the chief ministers of the Pandya king, Parandaraya Dichiraya. When he started the expression of his work, 
he passed away and it was continued by his um, brother Mohan Lina. And <coughs> this is the uh, inscription found on one of the, uh, on the entrance, on one side of the entrance. And uh, the front mandava of this cave temple, this is the, the original image of Yoga Narasimha. It is carved out of the mother rock. <coughs> and uh, there is a front mandava which was constructed by one of the uh, ministers of the Vijayanaya ruler, Mr. Devaraya. His name, the minister's name was for Ramanathan. And uh, there are, in addition to this uh, 770 inscription, there are many inscriptions in this uh, cave temple belonging to the Pandyas, early Pandyas, the later Pandyas, Suvalas, Vijayanagar, um, Nayak <coughs> uh, rulers, and so on. And there is one of the very famous inscription. It's a very long one uh, engraved on the rock within the temple complex. It belongs to the uh, Sola ruler, Parandala the first, who ruled between uh, 905 or 950 uh, CE. And this inscription speaks about the deepening of the tank, water tank, which is located in front of the temple. This inscription also speaks about the arrangements made by him for feeding the gods and the brahmanas who were um, uh, well versed and who recited uh, the Vedic um, scriptures. So, <coughs> there is another cave temple. This is dedicated to Subramanya. I think this is the only cave temple dedicated to Subramanya in the Pandya uh, country. Uh, these are the uh, Bali sculptures of uh, Subramanya and uh, Devaya. This cave temple is called Ladanpuri. There is an inscription in uh, one of the walls of the cave. This is the cave. You know the left side, there is an inscription at that wall at that side. This, but it is mostly erroneous. According to this uh, uh, inscription, when Vattaprichi Nambiran, when Vattaprichi Nambiran, Dr. Somaji, he excavated this cave temple. There is a sculptural representation of this Patakrichi, Nambiran Patasomaji, and in front of him, the Pandya king, Parandaya Yudhikarayan, is just kneeling and he is saluting this uh, shape, this Patakrichi, so much. And that sculpture, that it's not available to us, so that's why we are not showing that. And it's a very beautiful sculpture. And the king himself is saluting that uh, uh, person. So, this is the tank I told that Paradaya's uh, inscription speaks about the deepening of this um, tank. It is a locus uh, tank. It is always full of water throughout the air. So, so, the rainwater flows through the rock into this. Um, tank. And there is also another uh, Vishnu temple by name Veda Narayana temple, which was constructed in, in the 13th century uh, C. And there is an inscription which speaks of inscription of Prostagara Pandya, which speaks about the daughter by name Alayya Manavala. The name of the daughter is Alayya. Manava. Next, Tirupala Mudra. So, Tirupala Mudra is also a multi religious center. Jain, originally it was a Jain center. According to Tamil literary works, it was a center for um, Subramanya. Then, according to um, 
the devil minds of Sanyana Samantha and Tinao Kirsa, it was a Saiva Sinta. And then uh, it became um, even uh, during the Muslim rule, the Muslims also constructed a Dharga at the top of the hill. So this, this is the earliest uh, um, natural can in uh, Tripura is located in the western corner of this small hill. You can see there are stone bricks, and above the stone bricks also there are uh, Brahmi uh, uh, inscriptions. And there are three um, inscriptions here. Uh, Andhuman, Purushpitra, Purushpitra means who had excavated or who had cut the uh, bed, stone beds. The stone beds, almost, in almost all these caves, the stone beds are very polished. Like the Asovan pillars. Like the Asovan pillars. So, Andhuman, Purushpitra, Maraya, Kaya, Yirkaru, Yirakuripiya. Oralayan Sahita, Aise, Nidusar. So these are the names found, the donor's names found in the um, inscription. And this inscription belongs to 2nd century um, BCE. And uh, there, are, there is another uh, center which belongs to 9th century. It is um, uh, near the Buddha temple that is uh, called the uh, <coughs> uh, I used forget this Parniyadar always. Okay. Parniyadar, this is located by the center. And the inscription which we saw, it also mentions about the existence of a water spring in this uh, area. And you can see by the side of on the rock, there are two structural uh, representations by the side of this Parniyadar uh, temple. One is Babu Green and another is Paswana. So the Paswana, you can see here, his enemy command is shown in two places. In one place, he is throwing stone on him, and in another place, he is just uh, surrendering to Paswana. So it is an animation uh, technique used by the artist. Here, yeah, you can see at Sivadhuavadi, who carries this uh, umbrella over the head of um, Paswa. Uh, and there are also um, whatever the inscriptions under these images. It speaks about the names of the donors. Yes. And there are, I think there are some other sculptures of before that. Before that, okay. Now, another important Jain Center, originally it was a Jain Center, this is located on the southern face of the Tripuramudram hill. This is called Tripuramudram. Tripuram means south Tripuramudram. It was originally a cave temple constructed, excavated by the Jains for Yatitana, probably. Mahavira, who is seated under an Asura tree. It was converted into a Saiva temple in the 13th century during the reign of Maravarman Sundarabhanya I, who ruled between 1260 and 1238 by one Saiva Siyar, and he himself in an inscription, the, the inscription is there. In the, in the inscription, he says that it was converted. This particular temple was converted into Sundarabandhya Yisurambraya Sundarabandhya Yisurambraya temple. So, there are also the sculptures of the donors here, and there are also sculptures of. See, these are the. In almost all the, the caves, this brick is there because 
this the purpose of this is to draw the water away from the king. With the help of this drip place, they draw the water away from the king. The water will not enter into the cave there. The number of small the uh, caves, even in the natural caverns, they have cut out on the facade, on the facade of the cave, they have cut out this drip place. Yes. Actually, this is the, the image now in the Dermatrana. It is also a bar leaf cut out from the uh, mother uh, rock. But previously, there was an image of a Tirtagara seated under a soga tree. The traces of a soga tree and uh, the pedestal of the Tirtagara they are all given now on the end of this. See the this is the Asoha tree, the branches of the tree. Here you can see the rest of um, the Tirtana. So it was removed. The Tirtana's image was removed and in its place an image of Andhanarishwa. It is half male and half female. So the right side is Shiva and the left side is um, so this is Atana Ishwara. So this particular uh, image was carved out in the 13th century by uh, Prasanna Deva and others. Yes. So on the, the back wall of this cave, in the same 13th century, many uh, the Narada images and the Hanambu Narabadi and uh, Subramanya, these constructs, Pandit Devani, these images were right? carved out and uh, on the this eastern wall of the cave, there is a very long inscription in which the conversion of this temple into Subramanya is from their temple is mentioned. This is the inscription. This is the inscription of Subramanya. And there are also sculptures of the Devaran Trio, Trunavatarsa, Nanasaranda, and the Sundara. This is Trunavatarsa, Nanasaranda, Central. It is Sundar. Sundar is in the center. Oh, no. ah, the last one. Correct. Next. <clears throat> and as I said, in every Zain hill, the Hindus also created air temples and constructed um, structural temples. So that is why the next one is. Subramanya, the famous Subramanya Swami Tirtanamudra, it is located on the northern face of the hill. And actually, this particular cave was excavated for Shiva. The inscription itself uh, says that it was excavated for Parma Swami. Actually, who did it excavate? Now it is called as Subramanya Swami. That's what, but it was excavated in the 8th century, that is in the year 773, 773 uh, CE, by one of the Pandya um, uh, ministers, Satan Gadavadi, and his um, uh, wife, Nakan Putri. There are many shrines uh, within this temple complex, uh, cave shrines. Those shrines were excavated by Nakan. Uh, but even in the Sangam Ritual, we say about 1st or 2nd century CE, there is a reference in Naganam about the existence of the Subramanya temple there. But the temple which is mentioned in Naganam uh, does not survive now. And uh, in the Devaram times of Nana um, Sambandar, 
and Tudogas also, there is a reference uh, to this temple as Tirupura Mundratu Udaya Swat Temple. Tirupura Mundratu Udaya Swat Temple. So, however, historically, we are able to now find out the surviving cave temple, that is, which was excavated in the 8th century, that is in the year 77 and uh, the CE. It has double science with this. Actually, it was excavated for Swa. However, there is another sanctuary facing Swa sanctuary that is dedicated to Vishnu, as in the case of the lower cave temple at Tichapan. There also there are uh, two uh, sanctuaries opposite to each other. One is dedicated to the Swa and another is dedicated to Vishnu. Swa's uh, sanctum, a Swa's shrine is facing east and Vishnu's shrine is facing uh, west. Within the Yadvagarada of Swa temple, Swa is shown in the form of Swalinga as well as in the form of Swa's temple. It is, um, it is because of the influence of the um, Pallavas. In almost all Pallava temples, one can see in the Gambodhya Swaringa as well as Somaskanda, Siva, Parvati, and in between uh, the child of Kanda and the Sita are in standing posture also. Uh, the sculptures are made. And uh, this is one of the such uh, shrines within uh, this cave temple. It is Saddam Adriyas. So many uh, innovative works have been uh, done in the Tirupura Mudra temple because the Anamalai Asuma cave temple was excavated in the year 770. And this temple was excavated after three years. You see the difference. Within this temple complex, there are many excavated cave temples for Annapurani, um, uh, Sabdavadrigas and for Jashtadi. I think uh, here only we have separate shrine for Jashtadi. In the whole of uh, India, we are not able to see separate shrine because in Chola country, loose sculptures were made but not separate shrine was uh, constructed or excavated uh, for um, just a day. So, this is a very um, large complex as in the case of the Chalukya temples. As in the case of the Chalukya temples. So, it shows that there were some matrimonial alliance between the Chalukyas and the Pandyas and there were some conflicts also between the Pallavas and the Pandyas. But all these vicissitudes did not spoil the migration of the artist and the artist activities. So the artists were freely migrated from one place to another place. The artist activities were also uh, not disturbed by the political vicissitudes in those days. So these are these are important. Uh, this is a very uh, beautiful uh, sculpture. This sculpture is the one and only of its kind in the world of Tamil Nadu. And here you can see um, Raja is, uh, this sculpture is on the um, outer wall of the Swas uh, and um, it is covered with iron um, rocks and other things because people used to go and touch. These images, and here uh, Shiva is uh, performing Sadura Tandava. Sadura Tandava. He holds a flag in his hand. And you can see the, on the top of the flag there is a image and the, there is an image of Nandi. That's why it is called Nandi Pacha. And uh, it is uh, actually. An adaptation of um, Badami. 
Sakyam, Badami Kirtan, the Badami also the same type of Naraja um, image is there, but that is earlier and this is somewhat later to um, Badami um, sculptures. So, next. And then, <coughs> then also, I told that other uh, the temples, there is Asu Vishwanava temple, it is on the top, at the top of the hill by the side of the Jain images. By the side of, and there is also a natural screen to the side, and the Jain images are also there. And this is the Asu Vishwanava temple. And again, at the top of the hill, there is another Darga, Sikandar Darga. This is, this is the steps going to the Asu Vishwanava temple. It's the old picture of Asu Sunara. Uh, next, this, there is a Dagda. This is the Dagda. Next, this is the entrance to the Dagda. Sikandar Sa Dagda. The Muslims ruled the Madurai country between 1325 and 1371. Say for about 40 years, they were not as Madurai Sultans. If you go to Madurai, go in Palayan, you can see their vestiges also. Okay, so there, this is the inner side of the uh, the dark. Now we have come to another important center. That is Samanamai, That is JP. The very name itself indicates that it was one of the very great Jain centers. Why we say it is a great Jain center? Because the inscriptions from here they speak about the student, the names of the students, their teachers, and the teachers' teachers. So the names of the three generations of uh, the um, staff and the uh, students are found in this um, Jain. So it is a excess cube um, structure. You can see the focus point at the foot of the hill. And uh, this is uh, one of the, the earliest uh, natural cavern. It is located on the southern, uh, sorry, northern, uh, rock, northern face of the uh, rock. And you can see the difference also. And there is an uh, inscription next. This is the uh, inscription. This is the name of the, uh, the donors. So, this is the earliest one. It comes to 2nd century BCE. This is the Kannada inscription, which is found at the top of the Jain Kit. It speaks about the association of the Mula Sangha at Sarana Bhagavala with the Jain Guild here, the Samaramalai Park, uh, Jain Guild here. Uh, and uh, there were uh, people who used to come from Sarana Bhagavala, teachers and students come to here. Uh, some teachers they teach, and students also they learn uh, the spirituality and also uh, even um, ethics, the Jain ethics, other things. So it is a uh, very good reference to the less close lessons between the Jain Hill at Madurai and the uh, Sarara uh, Belgar. And there was also some lessons between Tripurakundram Cave, Jain Cave, and the Jain School, which flourished in a place called. Purandi Tirukkattamalli, in a place called Purandi Tirukkattamalli. It was located because it is not there now. It was located uh, from the main, some 20 kilometers away from Madurai Arbukote main road. Now there is no traces of because it was a very great um, um, uh, monastery. Uh, however, the traces of the monastery are not found there. However, in other places, 
This is called Mahayadi Perumshadi. It was constructed by the Pandya Buddha, Karanaga Gira Narayan, who ruled between 860 and 860. It was named after his wife, who was a chair of prince. Perumdhya. So, Mahayadi Perumdhya. Madhavi, her name was Madhavi, Madhavi, Madhavi. It was one of the uh, great uh, structural temples of the Jains. In the right, Madhavi district, this is the only Jain structural temple. Next. And uh, on the western side of this hill, there is another hill in continuation of this. Another hill which is called Muthu Patti, Perumal Malay. It is called Perumal Malay. It is also uh, a yeah, natural cavern. This Perumal Malay temple, it, uh, it has Tamil Nadu inscriptions which belongs to first century C. And um, uh, there are also uh, sculptures of 9th and 10th centuries in this hill. And there is a loose sculpture of a Tirthankara. Perhaps the monks used to worship as a, an image of the god of Tirthankara in that place. A very beautiful um, loose sculpture in this um, um, cave. And here also one can notice three historic rock paintings. Here, I have to record uh, one thing that the prehistoric rock paintings of Muthupati Perumal Malay was discovered by Professor R. L. Prahman. And he has also published um, in one of the volumes of Indian history, uh, Congress volumes also. So it was discovered by him. It is there. Um, and mostly now, it's mostly eroded. Uh, only the traces of some of the paintings alone are now um, found there. This is, these are the borders names of the stone best. Musiri Kodan, Nagarperu, I told you that Nagarperu is Nagarai Pupote. Nagarperu Hunde. Nagarperu. Sayan of Virudayu. Is it Virudayu or Nindayu? Nindayu. Nindayu. And the Tidhi Kartan. That is Tidhiya. Tidhi Kartan. Tidhiya. So, these are the uh, names of the donors of the stone that's here at the Surma um, Marai. And next one. These are the best. Let's see. The sculptures of and in the 10th uh, century, uh, sculptures of Tirthagas in Rumar, right? mostly uh, Mahavir. This is the most sculpture, you know that. Because this is located within the cab. This is Ponga Pium. This particular cave temple is located in another hill by, by, the, by the side of this Jain North of it. This particular hill is called Nagamalai Hills. This is Nagamalai, Serpam Hill. It is referred to in uh, Tiruriyadavara also. So we are not going to that uh, area, and this is Nagamalai Hill, and uh, in the western corner of the Nagamalai Hill, there is a Jain cave, natural uh, cavern, uh, which is called Kungar Kuliyambra. Okay, Kungar Kuliyambra, uh, and the inscription, the uh, Brahmi, Tamil Brahmi inscription here, 
is there. If you glance through first century CD, there are about more than 60 stone bits. More than 60 stone bits are found uh, in this cave. You can see the line, the line of uh, stone bits, and in some region there are also um, uh, some raised platform as a pillow. Below, pillows are also so these beds are very beautifully poised like uh, iron rods. They look like iron rods, not as stones. So very um, well poised uh, uh, of their beds. And there is, these are the names of the donors: Ubasan, Ubaluman, Seradan, and Palalu, Pertan, Pitten. These are the names of the donors. And Pitanandi carved out a beautiful image of Pagavira in the western corner of the king in the 9th and 10th century C. This, this is there. Next. Right up. So the name of the he is not so okay now. Okay. I understand that this is a property. Aitavati is another historically important place where one can see the natural beauty, the tanks, water tanks, the drinking water tanks. There are many birds from these birds, they all travel from many areas, even from foreign countries, and they used to assemble. Uh, in that Antabati um, tank, water tank, and there is a drinking water tank at Antabati. Even today, whenever uh, the, a newly married man or a newly married girl he used to start cooking, he used to take or flow water from that particular drinking water tank, and then only his, she starts cooking. So, a new bride's cooking starts with the water from the drinking water tank. Even today, they are continuously practicing that tradition. And the water is also very, very sweet. There may be some scientific reasons. We are talking about scientific ideas, uh, uh, we are also not together. So there may be some scientific pieces. And this, this is the natural cavern of uh, Aita it belongs to the second century BC and uh, the names of the donors are also uh, mentioned here. Uh, Nelveli, Sirivan, Abhinan, Vedian, Gulagan, Kodipito. Kodipito means who make this. And the Vilanji, Vilanji is located at the top. So from there, one donor has come. Vilanji, Yelam, Tara, Alan, Bagan, Yamayavan, Yu, Nagai, Purukhuko. It is mentioned in this. Uh, and then there is also another um, image. Then by Ajahn and Dhi, there is a the water of the so you can see the water of the river uh, seen here and then first uh, then by Ajahn and Dhi and uh, this is Aritya Bhatti he is named after Aritya Nevi Aritya Nevi was a Jain monk who lived here for many years and there is also um, a Jain Tintana, the 22nd Jain Mahavira was the 24th Pitagara and then uh, 23rd was 
God. Sundar, Sundar means beauty and sound. So, uh, but even there is a reference to this uh, alaya in, in Salapati Alam. Salapati Alam is one of the famous Tamil letters, which belongs to 5th century CE. Compiles are written by the Lord the Head. And there is a reference in Salapati Alam about this alaya in life. Tirumal even so. Tirumal means Vishnu. It is the very place of Tirumal, Vishnu. But even read that, even during the, uh, say about 1st century uh, BC, 1st century uh, BC, there was a Jain cave. There are many such um, Tamil Brahmin inscriptions. Even in that Alaya uh, Jain cave, there are blocked and paintings. Blocked and paintings. Uh, pre historic market things. So, people uh, might have lived even some 2000 years ago in this uh, natural cavern. And the Jains also occupied uh, many of them. The Jains also occupied this cave. And there are references to some of the merchants who donated the best. That is the stone beds uh, here. The names of the um, uh, merchants, salt merchants, uh, gold also the iron merchants, um, then uh, what we call this um, sugar merchants, all these merchant names are found here. And another important thing is for the first time the name Madurai occurs in this. Madurai is a terrible form of let on you have uh, changed into Madurai. So earlier it was called as Madurai. So Madurai, the name Madurai was in this next. Kadungal and in the same field there are also the Vishnu temple at the foot of the hill and the, in the middle of the hill there is one of the six abodes of um, one of the six abodes of uh, <coughs> this is the uh, alaya poet in the foot of the cave uh, it is Vishnu temple there are two fort uh, surroundings one is inner fort inner fort and another is outer fort and then there is an incomplete uh, gateway that is Bunga of the Jain and the Tiki, and there are many mandapas. There is a Vasanta mandapa in which one can see the Ramayana paintings, very beautifully drawn Ramayana paintings, and there are also labels written under each um, slide, and under each slide written in 16th, 17th century Tamil. And also, it is also very useful for linguistic study. And there is another important mandala in front of the, um, the temple, main temple. It is called Tanyana Mandala, which carries beautiful sculptures. <coughs> this is a Tanyana Mandala. This carries beautiful sculptures of sportings of Vishnu. And uh, <coughs> this was probably the Agnama Park. During festival cases, it was here the celestial lineage of the god and goddess are celebrated. Next, this is Kunatu, uh, it is Parichu, it is located uh, uh, in a place in between Madurai and Sivaganga, and there in Kunatu also, earlier there were. We are, we are not showing pictures, but now they were at the Jain um, center. There were Jain beds also found uh, in Kundaku. And this is the 8th century. This is the uh, 8th century Jain Pandya gave the good, dedicated to Sivak. Yes. Okay. 
Upalata. Upalata is located by Madurai district in the Pelayu um, Chalam and uh, on the western face of this hill, Upalata, there are some nine villages of Tripalatas. Uh, Let's see. Now, how the local people have uh, uh, made all the paintings and everything. And the local people, they also applied the oil. When we visited the place, we saw that oil, okay, almost all images uh, are with oil. So, uh, it, is, it is very near to my village. Very near, it's up 10 kilometers. 10 kilometers. My village is 10 kilometers uh, west of this village. Okay, so uh, some nine villages are there, and uh, this uh, important about the things with us. Uh, next, so here it is located in between Melu and Tripatu, uh, and it also has a jail that's and the beautiful sculptures. You can see the sculptures of the and then the other side. Yeah. 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 Next. Puttu. This is the indication of the declining state of the gene. This. Because you can see this is very near to Surabhati. This uh, list of Surabhati and on the western face of this rock, you can see, next one, you can see the images. There are some four images of the uh, Tirtagras. One is Paswanara. Here, Paswanara, this is the only place where Paswanara is shown in secret. You can see this there, the last one. Paswanara is secret position. And uh, the Mukure is also shown above the, uh, the serpent pools. And uh, people, local people have arranged mustaches and beards also on these images. So, this is the declining stage of the Jain or men's people. And uh, almost, in almost all these 13 hills. These hills were earlier occupied by the, uh, the Jains and later on by the Dravidical uh, or the Vedic religious uh, people. And in one place, the Muslims also occupied the topmost region because of their religion. So these are the sacred hills of Madurai, which provide very, very important historical characters, including the name of Madurai as Madurai. Thanks to all of you. Thanks for being here. Barbie and others, and particularly my brothers. Uh, and my good friends, Nakhara um, Salam, who took me to all these places in all these years. We used to travel in his motorbike. On one occasion, when we were traveling from Mamanagar to Chennai, on the next day, I have to deliver a lecture in the Tamil uh, History Congress in the University of Madras. He was traveling in his bike from Mamanavar to Chennai. You know that sea breeze was very heavy, breeze was there, and uh, I was asleep and just I slid there to his shoulder. Immediately he stopped the gate. Otherwise, uh, now I would have been. <laughs> so immediately he stopped the gate. And we were uh, taking rest for one hour. After that, we 
and we move from that place to Ajene. So, uh, really, uh, things are there, and uh, I thank you. Um, for many things, I'm all of these things. <laughs>